How's it going, you guys? New Age here, your coach of the Alamo Valley Agrons, and this is our team prep video against the, uh, oh my gosh, I forgot what it's called, Tampa Bay Frogators. There you go. Pretty sure. Or is it for alligators? Yo, I need to check this really quick because I keep forgetting. Oh, I was right. Tampa Bay Frogators. Got it. Cool. So, uh, that is the team we're going up against this week. Um, and this team build video, I already said that, anyways. Um, so we'll jump straight into it. Uh, first off, I want to say one of the things I noticed immediately, which is kind of cool, is he only has uh nine Pokemon on his team. Um, obviously, not counting like you know, Altaria and Mega Altaria that I put up on the spread. His whole team is on the right, um, to the left are the six that I think he's gonna bring, but. Because he only has 9 Pokemon, that means I basically know his team, because he's only not going to bring 3. Um, so basically the 3 that I think he wouldn't want to bring against me is uh, Pidgeot for sure. Uh, which sucks because that is his only way of getting rid of hazards. Um, but Pidgeot is just really weak against my team. Um, actually I'm going to go to to my team real quick. To remember who I'm even bringing. Where is it? I just saw it. Alright. Um. Yeah, just because he's weak to, uh. Actually, where's all of my team? He's weak to a lot of things with Pidgeot, especially since it's not Mega Pidgeot. I have things that could outspeed him. I have things that can one shot him. I mean, like Crustle, Excadrill, Steelix, um. Porygon 2 with, like, Bolt Beam. Vaporeon with Ice Beam, Cockledur with Ice Punch, and I don't even think it could knock me out just because I could be AV and all that. I mean, basically, Pidgeot can't really do anything. Oh, sorry about that. Can't do anything to my team. Um, and then... I don't think he would bring Heliolisk. The, Alright, these are the two Pokemon um, I don't expect him to bring. Um... The other two that I don't expect, but if he does, it's like, I could see it. Uh, Gardevoir and Heliolisk, I don't expect. Um, Heliolisk, I could see, just because of Vaporeon and Sigilyph and things like that. And then getting water moves and strong focus blast for my steel types. And can also hit Crustle. Um, I could see that for sure. But, on the flip side, I have very specially defensive Porygon 2. Um, I have Steelix. Like, my Steel types that could eat up Hyper Voices, um, and I have, uh, Zebstrika that could have, like, Lightning Rod or whatever, like, Motor Drive, all that stuff. So, I have a lot of potential immunities to Electric as well. And on top of that, Conkledur can one-shot it with Mach Punch. Um, so, I, I could see why he would bring it, but I also feel like he shouldn't bring it. And then Gardevoir being the other Pokemon, I could see why. Just because it can burn things, um, Focus Blast, Psychic Moves, Strong Hitting, stuff like that. Um, but at the same time, my Excadrill outspeeds it without it even being Scarfed. And it dies in one shot to Iron Head. Um, and then on top of that, like I have other Pokemon that are bulky enough to resist it well. Like Vaporeon, or Sigilyph, or Porygon 2. Uh, so it's kind of like, they're so bulky that they could outstall Gardevoir until it goes down, basically. Unless it's like a Calm Mind set of Gardevoir. But even then, if it doesn't have the speed, I still just one-shot it with Excadrill. Um, I have a lot of Steel Threats on my team. And he has the two Fairy types being Altaria and Gardevoir. So, it is a little sketchy for those. Um, but I do feel like if he had to bring one, it would be better off that he brings Altaria. Uh, just because it has uh, more moves it could go for and a chance to set up on me and stuff. Um, so again, this is what I'm expecting him to bring out of his six. It's Cavalier, Mammoth Swine, Tangrowth, Greninja, Infernape, and Altaria. Um, I'm expecting Mammoth Swine just because it's good against all my Steel types and everything 100%. Um... It even gets like Ice Shard for things like Flygon, really strong Ice Stab for Sigilyph, and all that. It can just hit hard and has decent priority, so Mammoth Swine I'm expecting for sure. Also, it's his only thing that can really get up hazards. I think Infernape gets Stealth Rock too, which I was thinking about. He could uh, bring like 
offensive Mammoth Swine and uh, lead Infernape, that would be a thing I could see. Um, but I do feel like, if anything, maybe Scarf Infernape would be really good against me just because it could outspeed things like Mega Alkazam, potentially, um, and also hit my Steel types hard. That could potentially be Scarf. Um, a Scavalier, it's more so just a better of what he has. Because, uh, like I said, he doesn't have that many options. But a Scavalier is uh, somewhat better. Just to be able to potentially tank uh, maybe fighting hits from Conkledur. Um, also can hit my Psychic types with like Pursuit. Has strong knockoffs. Has really hard, uh, hard hitting Iron Heads. Can take my special hits and then hit back really hard. Um, so just things like that. Just kind of more of a nuisance. A Pokemon that could punish me for switching out. Like it's one of those Pokemon that you bring in. Force your opponent to switch out and then like hit them hard. Whatever comes in with the move and just kind of wear down the opponent's team. So a Scavalier uh, could definitely be good at that, especially with like a Choice Band or something. Um, Tank Growth, I'm expecting for sure. Um, really good wall and can put my Pokemon to sleep. It's a good counter to my Vaporeon. Uh, just a million things. It could either be a bulky one um, or an offensive one. Offensive one puts in a decent amount of work, but then I could. Uh, actually, I think an offensive tank growth would be better against me just because I've looked at the damage that like Leaf Storm and everything does and I don't have great answers or switch-ins to Pokemon that hit that hard. Plus still getting to keep the regenerators like really good for him. Um, so then Greninja, it can't be um, Protein in this league. It's only Torrent, um, which I was afraid of it being Protein, but now that I know it's not, it's a lot easier to deal with. Conkledur can literally one-shot it with Mach Punch. Um, but again, out of his other ones, I think this one might be a better option. Um, especially if he brings it just hitting hard with like the water moves to, cause my team is fairly weak to like water and ice, uh, together. Um, so Greninja just being as strong as it is and fast, um, I can really only beat it with priority or scarf Pokemon. So I could definitely see Greninja and Fernape. I really like against my team just because like I said like even things like U-turn can hit hard and then close combat like if it's scarfed or even like banded I guess could do so much damage and he gets a lot of coverage with like maybe thunder punch or something um, and then flare blitz still doing a lot as well um, or like I said he could bring like a utility one with like taunt, stealth rock, slack off or something. The only problem with that is my Pokemon that do set up hazards are good against, like they have ground or rock moves that can hit back hard. So if he did say lead with this and I led with um, say Crustal, if I had earthquake or something and I know this gets taunt, like I could just earthquake right off the bat, but it does also get access to Will-O-Wisp. So if he just wants to be fast and try and burn my whole team, like that would be uh, really cool. And I actually am not preparing for that just because I don't think it's going to happen. One and two, I have answers for that anyways. Um, and then last is Altaria. I like this better against me than Gardevoir just because it gets access to make its make itself stronger and faster. And then has things like Earthquake to hit hard. And actually, my team, I don't really have answers for physical uh, fairy hits. I have some for special fairy hits, but my team doesn't take physical hits as well. So, like, a boosted return from Altaria would definitely hurt. Um, or you could even go, like, the Cotton Guard route. I mean, whatever. I, I just feel like because of its bulk, uh, it has more of a chance to take on my Steel types than Gardevoir does for sure. Even though they have the same speed. Uh, but these are the six I could imagine him bringing. Like I said, he could bring Gardevoir and Helio Heliolisk, and I totally understand, but I don't... That's not what I'm expecting anyways. So now, move on to my team, which you already kind of saw. Alright, let me, let me take a look at me notes right quick. Uh, alright, so first off, uh, I wanted to say... Like I said, his only way to get rid of hazards is Pidgeot, and I really don't expect him to bring that, so I'm going to try and take advantage of that with Crustle, 
my man Pangea bringing uh, Pangea is a girl actually but bringing her for the first time I'm pretty sure uh, with Stealth Rock and Spike I can safely get off like one of these at least um, if not one Stealth Rock and one layer of Spike I don't know um, but I'll explain the set right here first so I made it like a lot of HP max defense impish to be able to take hits uh, but then something I noticed is I can actually give Crustal, since it's at base 45, I can give it enough speed to outspeed Tangrowth and Escavalier to super speed creep them. Uh, you don't normally run any speed on Escavalier, so I am sure Crustal would be faster than it. Tangrowth, he could dump the last four into speed, but if he's a mixed Tangrowth, then he's probably not going to have any speed investment, meaning Crustal could outspeed that as well. Uh, which I'll explain why that would be really cool. Uh, but first off, I want to talk about counter. I added counter for lead mammal swine. Um, if you wanted to try and get up rocks with that. So basically what happens is... Uh, I, It's it's a little iffy. Um, just because Earthquake does not two hit KO me unless he is life orb. Um, and if he's life orb, he's a lot easier for me to deal with. So, his best play would be to potentially uh, stealth rock the first turn and then earthquake. I don't know. I don't know. Basic. All right. I won't talk about what he could do. But basically, counter is there for Mammoth Swine. If he wants to hit me with earthquake, I hit him with counter and knock him out. Unless he is focus sash endeavor. But if that's the case, that's why I added the Rocky Helmet, because counter will bring him down to his Sash, and then if he tries to endeavor me the next turn, um, he will die to Rocky Helmet while I still have 1 HP. So he can't endeavor, and then Ice Shard me. So basically what that would do is I would counter first turn, Stealth Rock the second turn, and then after that, Mammoth Swan is gone, and I do still have a chance to get up like Spike Slater or something. Um, so that's what the counter plus Rocky Helmet is for. Counter could also help me against other Pokemon, but it's specifically for lead Mammoth Swine, uh, because that is one of his only uh, potential lead Pokemon as far as hazards go. So that's why I brought that. Um, and Stealth Rock and Spikes, like I said, um, one of the cool things about this is I would be faster than a Scavalier, so I could send this out if it has like 1 HP left. Uh, send it out after one of my Pokemon dies on a Scavalier and get up one more layer of hazards before a Scavalier takes me out. Um, so I could see that being really useful. The last move I added was Toxic because like I said I could potentially outspeed Tangrowth so I could always try and save this and then Toxic Tangrowth and then go down. Um, so Pangea could definitely come in a lot of handy depending on how it goes early game um, if I get a chance to use it or not. So I definitely like uh, I definitely like this set that I'm bringing this week. Um, like I said, Mamoswine is one of his one of his uh, potential lead Pokemon. The other one I was saying is like a utility Infernape. If he leads with Infernape, I'm not gonna leave Crustle out just because I have a counter to Infernape being Vaporeon. So we'll talk about that next. We got our usual max HP, max defense. This is actually supposed to be that. There we go. Um, but yeah, max HP, max defense, Vaporeon. Um, but I actually added Ice Beam and Scald this week, as well as the usual Wish Protect leftovers. Um, this basically can take Life Orb, Iron Fisted, Thunder Punches from Infernape and recover them off through Wish and Protect and leftovers. Um, so that's what Vaporeon is here for. And also Scald. Um, if he is Life Orb Infernape, Scald one-shots him, because Scald plus Life Orb knocks out Infernape, uh, even with that little special attack investment. So, Vaporeon could easily take on uh, Infernape, and that's one of his like physical threats to the team. The other one being Mamoswine, which I also take on, even if he has Freeze Dry, it does nothing to Vaporeon, um, and could also help me burn his Cavalier, um, things like that. And then I also gave it Ice Beam. So that way, Altaria can't set up in my face. Ice Beam can do a solid like 40 to 50% to Altaria. So it definitely makes him like choose 
uh, whether or not to stay in. Also, it makes me not have to go for Scald every time. In case he does bring Heliolisk, I want to have an option to be able to hit him with Ice Beam. Um, also, this allows me to hit uh, Pidgeot if he does decide to bring it, and Tangrowth if he wants to switch into that. Um, but I'm not really... I'm not bringing Vaporeon to take on Tangrowth at all. Um, I have an extremely dedicated counter to Tangrowth. Um, but otherwise, Scald, also, I could potentially take on Greninja if I burn it. Because um, I could definitely stall it out. The damage it does to me without it being protein is not enough to be able to beat me unless he like flinches me to death with Dark Pulse or something. Uh, but anyways, that's that's the Vaporeon set. We'll do very well against like his physical mons, and that's specifically what I brought it for. And now, moving on to the Tangrowth counter. My man, what am I? Sigilyph. I really like this set this week. I was very unsure about it, but the more I see it, the more I think it's going to be pretty fun. Um, so I decided on the Cosmic Power Sigilyph. Basically, um... I gave it Flame Orb to be burned, but not Psycho Shift, uh, for two reasons. One, he runs a lot of knockoff Pokemon on his team, and if he were to knock off my Flame Orb after I transferred the burn, then I wouldn't get burned anymore. And second, I need to be burned because this is going to be my Tangrowth switch in. Um, that way I don't have to continuously choose a Sleep Fodder. Sigilyph will be my status Pokemon, so I could always switch into Tangrowth. And after he knocks me off one time, um, I can roost off the rest of the damage from knockoff and even cosmic power against him to where knockoff won't do anything. After he knocks off my item, it already only does like 26% or something. So not enough to beat me 1v1. Um, and even if he has Rock Slide, I'm still faster and can roost before he can hit me with the Rock Slide, so it won't even be super effective. Um, so, that's why I'm not bringing Psycho Shift here. I kind of wanted this to play like a trolley Togekiss role. Um, I gave it Thunder Wave because I wanted a lot of speed control for things like maybe Altaria and a potential Scarfed Gardevoir because I could definitely see him being Scarfed. Um, as well as Greninja and Infernape, those two are really fast. Um, but then even the slower Mons, I can Thunder Wave them still and then try and like paraflinch them between Air Slash and Thunder Wave which Air Slash also lets me hit Tank Growth, obviously, and hits a lot of his team for pretty neutral damage. Um, and if I really want to, I could just set up Cosmic Powers in their face um, and be able to to take hits, like, forever. Um, I gave it enough speed. What did I give it enough speed for? Oh, to outspeed his base 80 mons. A lot of his team is base 80. Uh, Mamoswine, Gardevoir, Altaria... Um, that whole grouping of Pokemon, and then he has his slower mons like a Scavalier and Tangrowth. Um, so I outspeed that whole handful of Pokemon. The only ones I don't outspeed are Infernape, who I could potentially take on depending on its coverage, um, Heliolisk, who I probably won't stay in on, and uh, Greninja, which if I do get a Cosmic Power off, um, I can definitely wall Greninja, especially because I could paralyze it and set up and roost before it could even hit me. Uh, because I will be faster than it then. So the rest I just dumped into max HP and then into defense. Um, to be able to take the knockoffs better. Because like I said, like Mammal Swine, Tang Growth, Escavalier, they all get knockoff. And knockoff is definitely a move to go for against Sigilyph. So um, that's why I gave it plenty of defense to be able to take that. Alright, alright. So the next, the next set. Uh, AV Conk. The normal, usual AV Conk that I run with uh, a lot of HP, max attack. But instead of giving it a uh, knockoff, I actually gave it Poison Jab and Fire Punch. I'm not making the same mistake as last week. I'm getting a Fire Move to hit the Steel type. Because um, I don't want to be completely walled. Even though I'm pretty sure Conkledur does a lot of damage to it. Um, but yeah, Drain Punch. Let's see. Um... Oh yeah, I want to talk about this. I gave it AV and Iron Fist um, instead of Guts. A little bit ballsy, but it's really worth the damage that I get in exchange. And the only way he could really burn me is with a Will-O-Wisp Gardevoir, which I could definitely see, and I'm not going to leave Conkledur in uh, to get burned by Gardevoir. And a Will-O-Wisp Infernape, which, again, I'm not going to risk 
leaving this in on those two Pokemon until I know they're set at least if I know that they don't have Will-O-Wisp. Otherwise, the only thing that could really burn me is like a Heat Wave Pidgeot, um, which I'm not too worried about. So I, I feel like it's worth it to run uh, Iron Fist this time around, and the damage I get is ridiculous. Um, so I gave it Drain Punch just to hit things like, even like Pidgeot, it does like half to Pidgeot, which is crazy. And since I'm a Salt Vest, I should be able to take it on, unless it's like physical Brave Bird, but either way, I don't think that one shots me anyways. Um, it also lets me, if I want to, hit Mamoswine, Infernape, um, things like that. And then Mach Punch for the priority, Mach Punch one shots Heliolisk and Greninja, who are both really fast, and it'll be nice to just be able to clean up uh, possibly late game with Conkledur if he does decide to bring those. Uh, like I said, I do expect him to bring Greninja, so Mach Punch at least covers that for sure. Um, and can even do a nice chunk to Mamoswine if it's been weakened throughout the game from like hazards or anything. So last two moves I decide on were Fire Punch and Poison Jab. Uh, Poison Jab. I decided that over Ice Punch because it allows me to hit uh, Gardevoir as well. And Poison Jab actually does more to Mega Altaria than Ice Punch does. So uh, I figured that was a much better exchange. And it also lets me hit Tangrowth even though I have Fire Punch for that. Uh, Poison Jab does do more though because it's just a higher base power move. Um, so I could definitely just fire off Poison Jabs. Um, and Fire Punch is specifically again just for these Scavalier. It does let me hit Tangrowth. Um, but that's not exactly what I brought it for. And then last for the speed EVs, again, it has the same base speed as Crustal. So I gave it enough speed to outspeed Escavalier and Tangrowth, which is awesome because I could come in and easily revenge kill Escavalier with Fire Punch. And then as far as Tangrowth goes, if I wanted to, I could stay in on Tangrowth, hit it with a poison jab before it puts me to sleep and do a lot of damage to it. Um, so either stay in and hit it before it puts me to sleep or even bring it into revenge kill if tank growth is low enough uh, so i really liked the speed that i could put on this week uh, next up from the beginning like i said seeing like his fairy types and um all that i decided uh i knew scarf excadrill would be really good this week um so i'm for sure taking advantage of that so I definitely, I brought Scarf Excadrill, it does so much against him. For one, um, I have Rapid Spin just in case he brings hazards. I don't, like I said, he doesn't have a ton on his team. Uh, but if he does, I can get rid of him. Um, and then Iron Head, obviously, uh, one-shots Gardevoir. I think one-shots Altaria, it depends on his spread. Uh, can also do a lot to Mamoswine. Um, and does a decent amount to Tangrowth, actually. Um... And then Earthquake, I added Earthquake does so much against this team. Um, it hits Escavalier pretty hard. It one-shots um, Heliolisk and Infernape, which I outspeed with the Scarf, obviously. Um, and can one-shot Greninja uh, from full, I believe. So Earthquake just puts in so much work, especially because all of his team would be grounded after Mega Evolving and if he doesn't bring Pidgeot. Um, I can really just come in and spam Earthquake towards the end of the game if I really wanted to. And the last move I decided on was Magnet Rise. Like I said, he has a lot of knockoff Pokemon. So if he does happen to knock off my Choice Scarf, it's fine because I still outspeed his base 80 Mons um, because Excadrill is 88 base speed. So I can still outspeed Altaria and Gardevoir if they're not Scarfed um, and Mamoswine. Um, so basically what this could let me do is come in, say on Mamoswine, and Magnet Rise if my Choice Scarf is gone, and then Mamoswine can't touch me, um, and I can start hitting it with Iron Head and stuff like that. And same goes for Altaria, if it has Earthquake, it won't be able to touch me. Um, so I just added Magnet Rise because my only other two potential moves were Rock Slide to maybe hit like Pidgeot, but Iron Head does plenty to Pidgeot, like two hit KOs it, or x Scizor to hit uh, tang growth which is good it does do a decent amount but earthquake still does a nice chunk and i have sigilith for tang growth anyways so i wasn't really trying to focus um too much on that coverage for tang growth i'd rather have this like cool scenario going on where even if i lose my choice scarf like i have more options now like all that does is give me more options so i gave it enough speed to outspeed his base 80 mons 
um, and then just put the rest into HP. So that's the Excadrill. Last up is Alkazam. I honestly felt like I was good with these five. I didn't know what else to bring because there were certain things like Slurpuff wasn't going to get to set up on anything. Steelix would have been alright but was a little too slow and he had a lot of Pokemon like Tangrowth, uh, Mamoswine, Greninja, even Gardevoir with like Focus Blast, Hel Heliolisk with Focus Blast. It was just too slow. Uh, Porygon I was considering but with all the knockoff mons, potential sleep Pokemon, um, a fighting type in Infernape, I was like, I didn't really think I could have good coverage with Porygon. Um, and then Flygon, I was unsure about just because he had Altaria. And Zebstrika, I didn't want to bring um, just because of like Mamoswine and Tangrowth. It was, it was just too much to kind of work around. So I instead just decided on a Pokemon um, like Mega Alkazam just to be able to come in and punch a hole in this team. Like, whenever I see the opportunity to send down Mega Alkazam, I'm going to do it and just start damaging his team so the rest of my team has an uh, easier time. It's not meant to sweep. It's not really meant to do anything. Um, it's just a hard-hitting Mon that can put in the work on his team. Um, but I will talk about the set. It's really cool, actually. Um, just the scenarios that I put into place. Alright, so... Let's see. Before Mega Evolving, it outspeeds everything except for Greninja. After Mega Evolving, it outspeeds his entire team, even Scarf Gardevoir or Plus One Mega Altaria, which are the same speed, but um, it does outspeed those after it's a Mega Alkazam, which is amazing. That's so cool. Um, so that's what I gave the speed for. Um, then Max Special Attack and just put the rest into HP. Um, I decide on Dazzling Gleam, Psychic, Hidden Power of Fire, and Sub. Hidden Power of Fire um, is obviously really just for a Scavalier. In case, um, because I don't want to be forced to switch on a Scavalier because he could be running Pursuit and then that would just like knock me out. So I wanted the option to be able to stay in against the Scavalier, so I gave it Hidden Power of Fire. Um, Psychic is amazing. Psychic does more to Tangrowth than Hidden Power of Fire does, so Strong Psychic Stab basically hits his entire team other than. Greninja, which I have Dazzling Gleam for Greninja, also for Altaria, that's what more so what Dazzling Gleam would be for, but I do have Speed Greninja afterwards, after Mega Bombing, so I could hit it with Dazzling Gleam anyways. Um, and then at last I gave it Sub, because it gives me kind of a cool scenario against Mega Altaria. So basically how it works is, say I have Mega Alkazam out, I just kill one of his Pokemon, then he sends out Mega Altaria to try and set up on me. Even though, I don't think this would happen, but this is the scenario that could happen. If he goes for Dragon Dance, I go for Sub turn 1 no matter what. Because then, afterwards, I still outspeed him after that Dragon Dance. So what he can do is choose to attack me and break my Sub. Then that turn I hit him with Dazzling Gleam, and then the next turn I'm still faster, hit him with another Dazzling Gleam, and he's dead. So, effectively, Altaria didn't get to do anything. Or, if he wants to, um, if he tries to Dragon Dance again, then I still hit him with two Dazzling Gleams and knock him out. Or, if he does just decide to attack me straight away, like twice, when I try and sub, um, you know, it could knock me out. But then I just come in with Excadrill after and Revenge Kill because Excadrill still outspeeds Mega Altaria after a Dragon Dance. So, um, it, Substitute gives me a cool scenario against Altaria. It also does things like, you know, obviously his Tangrowth is going to run like Sleep Powder or something. So it lets me be able to sub against that and still be able to stay in and then start hanging him with Psychic. Which Psychic does like 60-70%. to 70%. It's a crazy amount. So... Like I said, Mega Alkazam is just there to punch a hole in his team, and it does a really good job of that. Um, so yeah, that's that's basically the team, you guys. Um, the past few weeks, I haven't felt like confident in my team, not because of how I built it, but because of what I was going up against. But this week, since there's so little amount of Pokemon, I felt it's been a lot easier to prep for. So I really like the prep that I did for this week, and I feel like it's really going to work out. Um, so I am excited to do this battle. Um, but let me know. 
let me know what you think about the team down below um uh, my opponent's team or the tampa bay fur gators their information youtube and twitter is going to be down below in the description uh be sure to check them out because their side of the battle will be on their channel and that's all i got to say so until then i'm new age steel keep on watching i will see you guys later in our week four battle